Right, so we're building the cross sections for the hull and I'm using a standard system of pricking a piece of 3mm uh, ply, it's cheap ply. If you go to the um, Scuffy movies you'll see a bit more detail on this and how I've done this. The Scuffy hull is a bit more complicated than this as you can see, it's just a series of circles. Um, so I would suggest have a look at that to get a bit more information. Now this is the plan clearly that I'm working from <clears throat> and at the rear of it you can see all of the cross sections for the hull. So the next step is simply to cut them all out um, and it's a very simple process. Um, I'm using 3mm ply because uh, my contention will be to uh, cut a piece of timber with a uh, tungsten carbide, carbide blade and it actually is also 3mm. I did in fact have to put these in the sander a little bit just to fit them back but this center line now sits against the center line that I've drawn on this timber and it's a very simple process for just building all of these in. Got to make sure that they're flat against the bottom and that there's no swath from timber in there, that it's all clean and clear. So that as we go ahead, we can begin to build what is basically going to be the Nautilus hull. Now, clearly the very bow and the very stern are going to be made out of solid timber, so uh, I'm not worried about those. But that is basically what the hull looks like. Before it dries, I've got chance now just to make sure that the dimensions are right. And now I'm using hot glue and cardboard of all things and I'm making this hull as you can see. I'm also using a piece of round metal just to get the shape on the cardboard before I put it in. I'm not overly worried about all of this, it's all going to be sanded back in the end. And these are now some pieces of balsa ridiculously perched on the stern um, and as you can see not looking quite so ridiculous anymore. So I sand them back before I do any further with my uh, sander, a hand sander. This is a tool that you get from a car body shop. Uh, it's just brilliant for this kind of work because you can put quite coarse sandpaper in it. It's very light and of course its length means that you really get a sense of uh, keeping linear integrity in what you build. So here is the hull. There's the stern. I've got that little rise around the top deck and there's the bow. In the end I'm not going to be happy with this bow but I've got plenty of time to play with that. But the next step is to get some um, fiberglass and fiberglass the hull. So the, the way to do that as you... It, once again look at the Scuffy videos. I go into more detail over all of this on those videos. But I put a nice coat of um, fiberglass onto the hull and then we get the fiberglass itself. Um, good idea to use gloves when you do this. Uh, put the fiberglass onto the hull and then using the paintbrush you paint it on and gradually you get it all so that those um, the hungry look of the cloth uh, stops and it's all full of fiberglass and when you've got to that point you can happily stop. This is just the very rough beginning of making this hull nice and strong. So we And you can do it in pieces as well, it doesn't really matter. So you can see here I've got it all propped up on its piece of timber. I'm just holding it all. Now I'm putting another uh, layer of fiberglass onto it. I'm using a fairly coarse fiberglass and I've done that to make the hull really quite strong. And now this is a seminal moment in the building of a boat where you simply cut the hull away from that base frame. Look at that. There's the Nautilus for the first time seen in real time. Now I'm bolting the base onto a piece of timber because the first thing that I want to do is, and I've done it already, is put this in the rip saw and cut the top so that it's flat because the top deck of this boat is perfectly parallel with the keel. So it gives me an opportunity just to get that exactly right. 
and now I'm making a base up and as you can see I've got some foam in there and I've got my foam cutter. I made that when I built the model railway and I've got all the detail about that in there if you're interested. That was a long time ago. And now um, using some 2mm uh, perspex I'm just cutting the top deck and it's very simple to use perspex over a plan because you can obviously see right through. And I'm cutting it with a small saw and then with the grinder uh, to get the shape right. And there it is. I've actually put some extra timber in there so that I can screw these top pieces down. And that's so that it will hold its shape and, and it gives me a real sense of perspective as I continue to build the boat. But it's all temporary and there is the hull as it sits right now. All right, let me tell you what I've done with the hull so far. You've seen the construction of it, but there's some things I didn't very clearly mark out. On the, when you look at the cross section of the hull, you've got the flat top deck, you've got the sides, then you've got the bulk of the pressure hull, and then it comes down again. And you clearly see that there's a join at this point here. In fact, if you look along the side of the ship, like that, you see that there's a join and you see that the pressure hull comes out from underneath it. Now I'm exaggerating it just there. So what I've done with my hull is I have made it like this. Well, something like that. Because I want to finish this later. I want to put that on as an alteration later. So that's the first thing that the hull, oh, I'm really going to try when I work on the hull now to get the roundness of the uh, pressure hull and I'm not going to try and pull it up to the top deck. But the other thing that I've noted is that the whole top deck is flat so you can see I've made a top deck, I've cut it off and I've put it on. When you get to the stern of the boat it's round and it comes into the pressure hull shape. The top deck is quite high at this point and then it comes down in a curve and if you look at it from above that's the top deck, that's the pressure hull like that, it sort of comes down like that onto the pressure hull with that nice curve. So I'm going to do that later, I'm not going to worry about that in this little phase now. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to get to the messy part and start using a uh, car, car filler and we're going to make this look a bit better.